Hey, watch this episode on YouTube. Welcome back to Two Dudes Watch Cartoons, the podcast where two dudes, that is us, watch cartoons. My name is Evan. And my name is Alex. Today we're bringing you another installment of everyone's favorite segment, the DCE Eulogy. Brilliant name. We're mostly doing it because we had to capitalize on the name. It's brilliant. Going through um, the DCEU uh, one by one. Looking at the highlights, the lowlights, where they went wrong, what they possibly did right. And today, we have such an interesting one. We're going to be watching Suicide Squad. I keep wanting to say mm -hmm. the Suicide Squad, but it is not. It it's is not. It's just Suicide Squad. 2016, David 2016. Ayer? David Ayer. Ayer? Ayer. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, August 2016 is when this came out. Uh, Runtime 123 minutes. Chef's kiss. Uh, budget made on a budget of, of 175 million. Box office of 749.2 million dollars. And I think it's the fourth highest grossing uh, um, DCEU film in their so, entire body of work. This movie is extremely interesting to me because mm -hmm. I'll be honest, it's been coming. So just to walk you all back, when we first watched it, I feel like I came out of the theater being like, look, not the best superhero movie, not the worst. Yeah. U upon getting to rewatching this, though, I don't want to say I've been putting this off, but knowing it's next, I'm just like, oh, I really don't want to. And then and then I started and I was like, oh, I was like, this is kind of interesting. There's a lot I didn't oh, remember. Wow. Yeah. But then holy shit, the last hour. I was like so out of it. Mm -hmm. But so I think there's some interesting things here, some things I wanted to discuss with you, see what, uh, get your take on it. What did you think back in 2016? Because we were a DCEU apologist back then. Still am. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I believe I took my sister to see this. Uh, oh. And we're both big, you know, superhero comic book movie fans. Uh, and I think I remember just walking out of the theater. I don't know if she felt it as much, um, but I just felt defeated. Because <laughs> I was, you know, I was in college at that, or no, I was out of college no, 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 a little no. bit. My little sister was in high school. So I was like, it was going to be this cool bonding thing. We're going to go yeah. watch an awesome comic book movie. Uh, and coming off of Batman vs Superman, which I thought mm -hmm. was great and misunderstood and then... And and then coming out of this theater experience for Suicide Squad, it's like, damn, maybe they aren't going to get this thing off the ground. So there are some interesting elements to this movie. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to just completely crumple this movie up and throw it to the side. There's some things I really want to discuss with you and talk about. Okay. One thing out of the gate is just the tone of the movie. Yeah. It feels like they were going for something much more darky, darker and grittier, and someone came in and was like, we're going to jazz this up a little. Like, I, I don't know how to perfectly describe it. Part of it is the non-original music for the film. Yes, absolutely. So, are you familiar? You've at least seen the hashtag... Release the Ayer, the cut, Ayer, right? Ayer, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. So David Ayer, uh, if you're not familiar with his uh, body of work, he, I think he sort of burst onto the scene with, I forget the order, but he made End of Watch, which is like a oh, a, an that's awesome a great movie, Jake Hall about yeah, really gritty, uh, cops in intense, LA, intense POV. You're like yeah. on their body cam. Oh, that's yes. a great movie. He also made Fury. Whoa, you remember that from oh, back in the day. Oh, yeah. Was Brad Pitt in that? Brad Pitt, That's a Brad I believe, Pitt was in joint. that. John Bernthal, Shia LaBeouf yeah. was in that. Shia LaBeouf. Uh, so, Ooh, oh, seeing that wait, director, 
Oh. Yeah. Okay. Is this, and uh, so he directed this movie, and and I think that was promising for a lot of people. Um, and so there is this director's cut movement. He's made. He's you know alluded to it since the movie's sort of disappointing. You know, uh, lifespan. <laughs> and after the Snyder cut movement mm, picked up was... and and actually was released, calls for his movie to be his director's cut. Uh, um, picked up, and so he has his own hashtag. But uh, what happened is he shot this movie to be around 143 minutes. Uh, I think what his original editor had to to leave throughout the process, had someone replace him. But while he was making this edit, his sort of final edit, Warner Brothers was also making their own edit. And coming off of the reaction from Batman for Superman because of its dark, gritty tone, they got spooked. And uh, they... They hired a, the company. It's called the Trailer Park something. Uh, the company that did the trailers for this movie mm. uh, to cut the cut, edit the film. And so what we saw in theaters, what is on Max right now, is the jazzed up trailer company's version of the movie. Um, David Ayer has since said that his original cut has no radio pop singles is just an original score if that Ooh, has any the, you know i wanted yeah. to make clear the original songs are kind of bangers the ones that were made for the movie there's a couple of them that came on and i was like these were hits in 2016 mm. oh yeah yeah what's the main one is it imagine dragons oh that, my uh, no it, it's no. 21 pilots 21 heathens okay. yeah as soon as that came on i was like oh yeah i know this jam yeah so yeah what we get is this sort of weird hot topic like <laughs> goth light, uh, uh, the hot topic aesthetic shade. and dynamic to the movie. So I, this yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. This makes sense to me because I can feel the duality of this movie. What are we supposed to be? Some sort of Suicide Squad? I was like, dude, tell me he did not. That just is in say the that. original trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I, I that I I get what you're saying because. Any time a non-original song for the film came on, it really took me out of whatever was happening. Yeah. I counted. There are three needle drops before the title <laughs> card of this movie. Oh, my God. There's one ri- before the before the title card? Yeah. before wow. It's like they they have one to introduce maybe dead. Sh- I forget who the first character we meet is. Yeah. But then they cut to Harley. And they only play like a minute of the first song. I know. I they, noticed that. They cut to Harley Quinn. She's in the prison, and it's like the, you don't know me. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. You know, that's I was yeah. like so on the nose for every fucking thing. Uh, yeah. yeah they were um, like, we need these lyrics to say exactly what's going on <laughs> in the scene right now. <laughs> it's it's something. It's uh, it's really um, But hear really me bizarre. out. Hear me out. Okay. The start of the movie, even with these needle drops, these hits, I I actually really, and, and I, I think I've talked myself into what happened in 2016, mm-hmm. is I think the first, I, I don't know it's the half. I don't know where it, it starts to fall off. I can probably nail it narratively, but not time-wise. But so I actually really like the setup for all of this. Mm-hmm. I think Will Smith, um, we could get into that all. I think he's actually really good as Deadshot. I do too. I, I, I think that's a hot take, if I'm being yeah. honest, but I think he's got the grit for it. And I think if this movie took more of like a Hancock approach, his other superhero film, great I think it would have had a little... Great movie. I, love I think Hancock. it would have had a little more success. Um, yeah. And so I think he's really good. I think Margot Robbie's really good. I think um, Joel Kinnaman's really good. And I think the best of them all is uh, Viola Davis as Amanda Ooh, Waller. She's menacing. So there's this setup, though, that's going on. These are the four we're really setting up in the start here, and we get our periphery characters. I even think the crocodile and, and the pyroman, their setups are interesting. But these these four in the beginning, I was like, oh, I, I like, I'm getting the build of this. I'm getting the vibe of the Suicide Squad. Because I, I love the concept of a Suicide Squad. Like, the military being like, we have these prisoners, let's fucking put them to work, and no mm-hmm. one will know, and if they die, who gives a shit? And 
Um, Amanda Waller just embodies every bit of that philosophy. A and so, like, I I'm not going to lie. When this was all getting set up, like, obviously, I I I'm not new to Suicide Squad. I wasn't like, oh, this is <laughs> remarkable. But, like, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, maybe I'm discrediting this movie. But I genuinely think then, once they actually, like, all come together and they're on the mission in abandoned New York, I don't even know what's going on. It's it's almost it's really bad actually. It like it got to a point where I was like, "What's going on?" I was yeah. like, "I'm so lost at the moment." Yeah, um, there's a lot of competing dynamics. I I agree. The yeah. premise is so much fun. In that, they made a sequel slash spinoff slash continuation. Yes. With, that is recycles the same like they use the same setup for both movies because the Suicide Squad is the Suicide Squad like yeah. the premise is on we just we're going to talk a little bit about uh, we're going to have to we have to series, talk about yeah Suicide but we're also Squad. going to have to talk about the Suicide Squad oh absolutely also, just yeah. as a comparison so go on yeah sorry but the premise itself just gets beautiful Brilliant. I think where this movie fails where the Suicide Squad maybe did a better job is is uh, doing a little bit less of the exposition for each of the characters. Mm, okay. Just like, just like trust that these characters are fun or like we don't need as much. Like I think maybe with Captain Boomerang, we got the right amount of just like not digging into his motivations. Yeah. Whereas- You definitely think that was supposed to be Tom Hardy though? Uh, no, Tom Hardy was supposed to play Rick Flagg, Joel Kinnaman's Dude, role. Dude, no, 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 no. Captain Boomerang is a Tom Hardy looking sound alike, dude. There's no way. There's no That's according way. According to the Wikipedia. According to the Wikipedia. <laughs> no. They're lying. He yeah. thought it was for Rick Flagg, and when they saw it was for Captain Boomerang, he's like, fuck this. I guarantee, dude. I he, guarantee. He declined because it uh the scheduling with the Revenant didn't work out. <laughs> Good choice, Tom. Hardy. Good choice. Good choice. Um, so two other sort of contextual things about 2016. Oh uh, yeah, Hit I think me. Guardians of the Galaxy had come out a couple of years before. Yeah, so I think 2014, I think is the first installment. Yeah, Deadpool also. Oh, around that time. So Interesting. And you know what? I don't know that which Warner one. Is like, give me, give me, I want. I think we, yeah, they're like, give us this property. <laughs> um, I do think uh, there's a Marvel or there's a uh, Fox. X Men movie that comes out one of the uh, in 2016, one of the later ones, obviously. Mm, yeah. But so there's a couple of movies going on this year. But, um, I, I yes, I think like we said, and maybe that's just it. Is the first half of the movie is just the Suicide Squad premise. So I'm like, oh yeah, this is fucking lit. But so what I was saying is, I think back in 2016, I tricked myself into the first half of the movie. I was like, this is awesome. That like for the second half of the movie. I just still was in that feeling because mm -hmm. upon further rewatch, whew, this was all over the place. Yeah. All over the place. I don't, this, maybe this will color your um, understanding of the movie. I, I'm going to come in sounding like an apologist, but I really want to frame this conversation about like uh, where I think the studio failed this movie. Maybe it's yeah. not all that great. It's what we're here Whatever to do. It, it was going to be, wasn't going to be that great, but. Um, a lot of the flashbacks that we see interspersed throughout the movie, uh, uh, supposedly, or I, I think I've read, are were meant to be in like the first forty minutes of the movie. It was more linear; mm. they, there was no okay. cutting back and forth in the timeline. So I think that kind of throws things off. There is a, it's like heavy on the exposition in the in the front, and then you're just sort of in the mission. <laughs> they hop, jump in a helicopter, and then it's and then it's like the things third act go. of the movie. Zero to a hundred in, yeah. in in like thirty seconds. Like once mm -hmm. they gather and they tell them you're a suicide squad, you're gonna do what we say. They get them to the city. Doom. I, I and once we're in the city with all of them, to me it really loses. Okay, answer me this. Mm -hmm. What is the witch's brother just? Is she, what's the witch's brother doing? He's uh. He's there to supplement her power in this movie because she can't act because Stop. she's under All right. control. That, too much. But he should just be a number two. I'm here to help you. There was so much going on. 
And and I actually think it really hurt like Kara mm-hmm. Hottie Pants, whatever her Deleve- name is. Delevanine <laughs> something like that. Extremely gorgeous woman, terrible actress. Uh yeah, not actress. what was going on? <laughs> I was not able to phone. I'm sure that's part of the witch, but yeah, that was oh my god, dude. I was like, how is she able to move her shoulders so well and keep her head still? Uh, so that role of the brother um, in in his original script was meant to be Steppenwolf. Uh, oh my god, it kind of reminded me of in, Steppenwolf. Yeah, maybe it was like early designs, and then for Justice League, they took that same character model and just like covered <laughs> covered the face. I don't know the witch should have been part of the Suicide Squad at all because in my memory of the movie, she's fully part of the team, but not once does she do any team-related activity. Yeah, it weighs heavily on the plot. It's just like the romance with Rick Flagg, and that's why he's so invested in the outcomes. It's like, that's like a beat too many. Uh I think either go Enchantress as the villain or... Gang Go wars with the Joker. Yeah. Oh, or a gang war with the Joker would have been because I, we got to get into the Joker of it all. Mm-hmm. I actually thought some of these Joker scenes were some of the more compelling parts of the movie, weirdly, because I, even liking the movie in 2016, I remember walking out being like, man, Jared Leto was really disappointing. <laughs> so my whole thing with Jared Leto is I thought he was terrible in this movie. The one scene he has. In Zack Snyder's Justice League, at the very, 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 we live very end, in a society, I, I, I actually think he finally finds his footing in that scene. If that makes sense, sure. It's not. I think he finally figures the role out. And, and on rewatch of this, I see nuggets of that sure. Joker, yeah. but it's not. He, he himself has not figured it out yet. I think it's very clear he doesn't know. He's trying to be different than than Heath, which Heath is, Ledger, which yeah. is. Monumental totally task. understandable. Yeah, monumental task. Hard. Sh- it was going to be hard for anyone to follow it up on, mm-hmm. but I um I think I had a bit of a new. I'm not sitting here being like he was great because he just wasn't. But I had a bit of a more of appreciation for the Joker scenes it, this time around. Yeah, there are flashes of like I, I get what he was going for. More of a mobster. Um, I loved all his goons wearing those crazy helmets. That was mm-hmm. kind of fun. One's got a Batman head on. Yeah. I, yeah, I liked some elements of his portrayal. I think it's maybe not... Like the Joker... I guess the Joker it leads a gang in, in Batman stories or has minions, but like as a gangster, like... I don't know. That's not... Yeah, he seemed it, like he it ran, doesn't ran a true. whole mob... It was weird, like, normal people just being like, what should we do, boss? I was like, huh? who are they talking to? And I was like, oh, they're talking to Joker. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe th- some of the, the makeup slash costuming doesn't work. Like, you know he has what? a tattoo that just is deranged. It's like, oh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm oh, scared really? now. That, and that's the I hot topic. I felt very much like when he was laying down with all the knives pointed around him. I was like, ooh, I'm scared uh, of you ooh, now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but again, apparently, um, elements of Joker and Harley Quinn's relationship. I saw it's, this actually it's supposed researching to be, today. It's like tamped down to be more playful, for <laughs> more enjoyable, uh, more like Silly. approachable for a younger audience. Whereas I guess in the original script, it's a little more toxic and abusive. What? Not to say that that necessarily makes it better, but I think with the tone that we hear was intended. And the tone wise, I think it, it matches. Might. And I kind of wish we saw yeah. a little more of that. Like I'm sure, well, I guess I'm not sure, but I bet that's a big reason, like a part of the appeal of playing someone like Harley Quinn, honestly. So yeah. I, don't know. Um, I think just to touch back on Will Smith, I let's, love Will Smith. Let's go through the characters. Let's, let's go, go through, through Deadshot. Yeah. Deadshot first. Well, uh, we just did the Joker. So now we'll mm-hmm. go through Deadshot. What, um, what'd you think of him? I think Will Smith holds it down in this movie, man. I really yeah. do. He he's got it. He's he's bringing this zany script, to giving life. it his all, uh, grounding it. There were some really cheesy moments. Uh, him not pulling the trigger on Batman when his daughter's like, "Please, Daddy, don't." Oh, that and was another bad up. moment. I was like, "Dude, yeah. what is going on?" I. Totally agree with this take. I think if Will Smith is not in this movie, it's it's almost un- unwatchable. It's cartoonish, yeah. It's yeah because he, like you said, he has some zany lines and some zany moments. 
that he really brings a bit of seriousness to. So, you know, only thing missing from this, like tension wise, was like a Chris Rock in here for him to hit. But like for me, you know, I, I actually really enjoyed Will Smith's performance. Never misses a to. shot. Never I misses a shot. Never misses the Oh no. I, I was I was thinking which one of us is gonna make that joke? Oh, dead okay. dead shot wouldn't have missed. <laughs> for legal reasons, that's a joke. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he worked he, he really grounds this film. I think and I don't know. Uh, so go ahead. Because this again, thought. this pl- plot point or backstory sort of gets recycled in the Suicide Squad. Okay, I was about to say, where how do we compare him to Idris Elba? We know that he's not playing the same character as Idris not Elba. Playing the same character. But let's but essentially, let's call it what it is. He's the essentially same playing the same what is character. Idris Elba's character's name? Bloodsport? Dude don't test me like this. I don't fucking I know. It's, it's Idris sport, Elba. But he's also... It's such a shame. Yeah, it's such a shame because I do think Idris Elba does so well. But how can you not? How can you not compare it directly to Will Smith's role? It's the it, same it, character. Yeah. It's... Um, I, I think I... Not that I prefer it over Idris Elba, but I like Will Smith's performance. Like, mm-hmm. he's grounded. Um, the Suicide Squad is more bantery. Like, I don't know. Not to say Idris Elba does a bad job because he's great in that film, um, but I sort of like Deadshot here. Like, I, sure, that's a fair know. take. No wrong answers. Um, yeah. This is also a string of like Will Smith and Margot Robbie movies. You remember the other one? Focus, Focus. A heist movie. <laughs> I really like that movie. I know. I think I saw that in theaters. Did, I swear, both these movies came out in 2016. Though. They're stealing like race the, cars and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was a great movie. I think we saw that. Yeah. yeah. So this, I mean. We got to talk about Margot Robbie. This Let's is talk about her essential. Uh, this puts her on the map. This establishes her as. Mm, I'm a still going to go Wolf of Wall Street, but that's like her debut. But th- this yeah. is okay. Fair enough. I I get where you are going. Um, I honestly, when it really hit me was I was uh, it was like just before Barbie came out. I was on an airplane and I watched The Suicide Squad. Harley Quinn and Amanda Waller and and uh, Rick Flagg are essentially the only things that could have made it essentially Suicide yeah. Squad 1 and 2. Like, they were the ones that were like... So Harley Quinn is another one of the things that I think works in this movie. But I'll, I'll discuss just her as a whole. But I think, like, how iconic... Margot Robbie has played Harley Quinn, one of the most iconic, like, female comic book characters of all time. And she just played, like, Barbie. Like, she's, like... Played two of the most well known characters in all women. of yeah. fiction. Like, what a what a career she's like yeah. jumped up from because Wolf of Wall Street was probably 10, 11 years ago, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. It's also striking to remember that she's turned in three films as Harley Quinn. She, this is her first installment here as her third. She gets a full film. Mm-hmm. She's all to the Margot her. trilogy. There's a Margot. There's Robbie a Margot trilogy. trilogy. Yeah, oh, and in they're DC. not that bad. No, he, they're they're he, some of the, the highlights worst. of the. A, a lot of people love Birds of Prey. A lot of people dislike it too. But mm. br- I really like, enjoyed it. her tenure in the DCEU is something that I think is a highlight for a lot of people. Does she have more films than Henry Cavill? No. In the DCEU? Because he's got uh he's got Man of Steel, he's got Batman, Superman, and Justice League. Okay, okay, okay. But she's what were you the other... worried? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm yeah, the... she's the it's, other it's headliner though. Yeah, she's, she's the, other, the headliner. other headliner. She's more than she yeah. is like their Joker, if that makes sense. Like if they were mm-hmm. like if they were gonna go the villain spin off route, it would revolve around Margot Robbie, I'm sure. Absolutely. Rightfully now, so. The, the year's twenty sixteen. This movie comes out. This creates a whole new mainstay Halloween costume for oh, women. I, oh, for uh, for all time. I think for there's still time. women that'll do it. Yeah. yeah. I um and that's 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 a legacy. I won't lie. I do think, and this is maybe a hot take. Mm-hmm. I think while just the overall story for her was probably better in the Suicide Squad, I think she was probably funnier in this movie. She had some like mm. really laugh out loud funny moments, just like introducing herself to people at the wrong time. Like it was really good. 
some of those, I don't know. They grade on you. I thought they were going to yeah. get annoying, but I, I chuckled every time. I won't yeah, lie. Well, she's like, should I kill everyone? Haha, <laughs> it's the voices. Just kidding. That's not what they're really saying. Like, all it's that just stuff because like... of, it's because that was the one played in the trailer that was like mass okay. marketed to us. Yeah. Before the movie came out. To, uh, our good friend of the pod. Some shady song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our good friend of the pod, Tommy Pozzullo, says no movie trailers at all for him. If it's a movie he's going to see, he's not going to see the trailer at all. Okay. What do you think of that? Um, I, I don't think I can. I, I don't think I could watch a movie just off of word, word of mouth, unfortunately. No, 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 no. But like, like a Marvel movie or a Star sure. Wars, like he's going to go see it. So why have little spoilers in the in the trailer? Build the hype. I'm with you. I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> what trailer I love did I watch today? I, the tra- <laughs> I, I, I know the movie trailer I've watched the most times. Do you think what? you could guess... You think you could guess? I bet you could if you thought about it for a minute. Zack Snyder's Justice League. That is good, but I don't even. I honestly don't remember the trailer for that. The trailer I remember obsessing over the Batman. Oh, oh yeah. I watched that trailer like ninety million times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ticking. <A> <laughs> That's great, dude. Um, okay, so uh, Margot Robbie. Um, while this may not be her best in the trilogy. Definitely uh, uh, one of the shining spots in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, I know what I was going to say. I yeah. Before we move on, my whole thing. The fuck is Harley Quinn doing? Why do they need her? What skill does she present that like a regular military person wouldn't have done better? I think uh, maybe the ability to take a lot of like abuse. <laughs> She's a like, punching bag. Yeah. yeah. But like I, I guess yeah, I just it was like I, dead shots at least he's he's not superhuman, but he's got superhuman aim. The rest yeah. of them all had fucking abilities beyond belief. And she's the she she pulls out like her cartoonishly large yeah. fucking hammer and it's like I'm a bash some heads in. Yeah. Um I don't know. She doesn't really it, it, story wise brings brings some to the uh, something to the table, but Skill story wise, wise for sure, but like combat, if um, I'm Amanda Waller, I say keep Looney at home. She's not <laughs> helping us. Yeah, maybe it lures. Maybe there's some element of it lures the Joker out. If, I don't know. If Amanda, Amanda Waller is playing four D chess. Yeah. Never. Yeah, of course. Actually, so that makes sense. Um. um also, okay. Well, I know we could keep going character to character. I feel like there's this whole first act of i don't know it's new york whatever fucking city's being destroyed um Uh where they're like go it go 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 and then it just turns out that they're there to save amanda waller no build up to that surprise at all yeah there was no i I didn't that could have been their mission the whole time and i wouldn't have known like there was no like we gotta go secure a target like you know what i mean there was no yeah there was no there was no setup for it to be a twist. Yes, I agree. Cause I that I was watching this, doing a little bit of work, scrolling my phone. Didn't I totally completely missed that detail? I was just like, oh, they're talking to Amanda Waller now. They're like, what the fuck? We're here to save her. And I was like, you guys didn't know that. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? I was like, I didn't know you didn't know that. Yeah. Like, there was no indication. Rick Flag knew what they were doing, and they mm. didn't. Hor- hor- look. It, I'm not kidding. In a movie, one of the worst twist setups I've ever seen. Fell so flat for me. I, I'm not even exaggerating. That was the moment where I was like, oh, I see why people hate this movie. That yeah. was generally the first moment where I was like, the, what the fuck? Yeah. I, the whole them going into the city at all. It's just like, it's 20 minutes of nonsensical you know, backstory, wandering around and title cards, yeah. background exposition, and then they're just in the city. There's, you know, monster so, minions everywhere. Here's what I think I've learned from watching this then versus the Suicide Squad. Because for all intents and purposes, very similar setup. Mm-hmm. A group of criminals gets sent into a dangerous, possibly unwinnable fight that Amanda Waller has sent them on behalf of for the government. They don't want to. They have to. Uh, their head will get blown off. What the the Suicide Squad does, the, the follow-up, the one that it, the thing it does better is three things. One, it extremely demonstrates like the concept of the Suicide Squad with our first battle, her sacrificing a whole platoon of like even some named actors. Yeah. And 
Where this one, we only got the one guy who tried to escape and his head blew off. And it was kind yeah. of anticlimactic. Yeah. And then, and then honestly, the next couple of people that try it successfully do leave. Harley, like, and then uh, uh, Will Smith. So it's not demonstrated to us at all the concept, really, of the Suicide Squad of, like, why they have to do this. It's very loosely. Then, second, is they have this mission but it is never like defined in this movie. We need to go to a location. We know in The Suicide Squad, we're going to this remote island ruled by this dictator, and there's this problem, Starro, that we need to take care of. This one, mm. they're just like, go to New York and solve it. Like, there was, n I'm not kidding. And I yeah. don't even fucking know they're in New York. <laughs> Let me pull it up on Wikipedia. Let's I see don't, it. like, do you get what I'm saying though? Is, all of a sudden, the, the, they get up in a group and they're just wandering this wasteland city with like, mm -hmm. and then there's zombies at one point. Never comes back up. There was a whole platoon of like these these zombies that yeah. they needed to take out. Never saw them again. I'm I'm scanning the plot, you know, the synopsis on yeah. Wikipedia, and this. Seems oh, it's Midway City. It's mid Midway City, of people. Of co course, of course. Excuse it's me. City. Sorry, apologies, Midway Cityans. Um, Task Force X is formed to stop Enchantress, but she's part. She's like, part of Task Force X. This is she was you, part yes. of the formulation of. She was the reason they started Task Force X. It's like yeah. it. It's so not clearly defined. It's very loosey goosey, moving from one thing to the next, and and I actually usually love when a movie trusts their audience's intelligence, but this one wasn't like trusting me with anything it was just like yeah. here's some scenes <laughs> here's some scenes yeah they here's some scene this is a, a two hour long trail <laughs> dude this is what i'm saying is the first half i was like cruising i was like this mm -hmm. is great and i got to the second half and it took me literally all day to finish it i kept pausing it and doing other shit uh yeah and they they throw random people in it you like common and clint eastwood's dude, son dude dude and then Kamiko from the boys pops up, has like mm -hmm. one line. Katana, yeah. Katana, Katana. Um, that was fun seeing her though. I don't know how because she's wearing a mask. Instantly knew it was Kamiko. I, 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 I don't know how. Yeah, Karen Fukuhara. She a great actress. Uh, yeah. Poo. I uh, the second half of this movie. I don't even want to give it the title of confusing. Because that would imply, like... It was difficult so, to understand. It was difficult to understand, but I understood it, and it was just not great. Yeah. It's just thrown at you. It's just it's like, just... the Joker is doing something. He's trying to get know. Harley. He's trying to get Harley, which, okay. which, that's one of the, actually one of the clearest plot lines to follow, if I'm being honest. The mm. Joker wants Harley Quinn back. And I'm not sitting here and saying, like, all superhero movies should be simple, because that's not what I'm saying. Like, I think some of the best, like The Dark Knight, I do not consider, like, a simple, straightforward movie. But mm -hmm. when there's, like, a twist, like, they're actually been going to secure Amanda Waller, it's set up properly. The whole coin thing. They mm -hmm. set that up, like, six different times before they actually show you that the coin is two-sided. You know what I mean? Like, they... Sorry, I, I'm rich now. <laughs> here's what It should have been, they were sent on a mission to go secure Harley or another member of the Suicide Squad. But it turns out they show up and it's Amanda Waller. Like the Dark Knight twist. Yes. No, but literally, it should have been, uh, we need to save, um, like, Rick Flag needed to, like, direct them and be like, this is our, like, no, fuck the mission. We need to go secure our target. Like, mm. screw those innocent people that are dying. We have to go get the target. We have to go save our target. And then being like, fuck this. What the hell? Like, this target better be like shit and gold or something. And then it's Amanda Waller. It's Amanda, yeah. That, there was none of that. Like, none yeah. of it.
I don't have a car at the moment, so I'm getting a lot of things delivered to my house. Marty has made it so easy because not only are they fast and efficient, but they're the cheapest option out there by far. I get these matcha lattes that retail for like $45 for a 12 pack and I've never bought it full price. I get it on Marty for $15. Marty's woman owned, sustainable, socially conscious and eco-friendly. What they do is they buy up surplus inventory from the top brands that you love and they sell it to you at a lower price. So you save food waste and you save money. That was my first question was how do they get these things so cheap? But they have a model and it's passing savings on to you. They got hundreds of items, fast shipping, no subscriptions needed, and you can save on all the great food that you love. We do have a discount code. When you go to marty.com backslash two dudes watch cartoons, all That's one word. T-W-O, dudes watch T-W-O, cartoons. T-W-O, two dudes watch cartoons, all one word. You can save $5 off your order. Go to marty.com slash two dudes watch cartoons at our link in bio, or just plug in the promo code two dudes watch cartoons. That's T-W-O dudes watch cartoons thanks for supporting the pod go get yourself some delicious snacks alex go figure out the car situation i don't know what's going on i don't need to with marty back to the episode we could keep going character to character we talked yeah. we talked to the first two uh what uh who pick another one who do you want to go next well here's here's my argument we really oh. And we, we can go into the, we, obviously we will talk about the other characters, but really story-wise, main character-wise, it really should have just focused in on those two. The Rick Flag Enchantress Romance brings nothing to the story, just confounds no. it endlessly. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, Diablo. I, he, you know, he has a little you bit know, of an arc. As far as the side character goes, he felt like the appropriate amount to me. Yeah. He was developed. Didn't spend we know too his much story? Time. He actually burned his whole family yeah. to a crisp. I forget. But like we didn't. Do, what they do? Is it Avengers two? They do the the dream. It's a dream, but it's like, what? Uh, sorry. Let, let, let's what rewind are you saying a to me right now? At the end of the Suicide Squad, they all have dream sequences that from was... the Enchantress. Oh, dude. Let's, all right. We're, since we're talking about the false realities. Dude. <laughs> yes. Uh, Scarlet Witch gives them the false realities. Yes. And that's what sets Tony Stark on the path of like a Thanos like threat is coming. It's actually mm-hmm. a pretty fun through line that they've set up. Tony gets I more and more. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. Tony gets more and more paranoid as the movies comes on because he knows something's coming. You know mm. what I mean? He's like, I saw it. Like, I fucking yeah. saw it, dude. And so, um, oh, dude, this dream sequence. So their dreams were fine. Uh, Jared Leto out of the fucking, he was in his American Psycho outfit. Um, <laughs> he, uh, that sequence was fine. Him and his uh, Will Smith and his daughter was fine. But like Diablo just was like, it's a, re- it's not real. Like there was no like him being like no, like ah, uh, like I don't know. He just was like, hold on, guys, these aren't real. And they were like, you're right. Like they were able to yeah, communicate with him. So like, anticlimactic. It was so anticlimactic. There, it literally was just him being like, "We, it's not real, y'all. It, she's messing with our minds. And they're like, I guess you're right. Like, it was so weird. It was so weird. To me, it was almost like the actors in the room didn't know what was going to be like the memory sequence. So they were like, yeah, that was weird. Good thing we're over it. Like, <laughs> Yeah. That feels like it could have been potentially a reshoot, which they did spend know. $22 million on reshoots. Uh, oh, which is more than Dude, uh, the, the supposed six to ten million. The, the boys' spent. line in their most recent episode. He goes, he goes, and this TV show is the most. Exp-, he goes with its reshoots. This TV show is now the most expensive TV show ever made. So you know it's got to be good. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, that's so funny because that's probably what they think. Yeah, um, yeah. That the dream sequence. All feels oh, so anticlimactic because so... I think with Diablo, the only lead up to that we get is the bar conversation, which is yeah, which was. So I don't know if I'm being paradoxical and saying we need a little more lead up to that or a little more of or less story. characters. This is what I, this is what yeah. you're saying is you want to focus on a tight like three 
and have the side characters. And, and I don't know that the Suicide this the Suicide Squad probably does uh, John Cena, Idris Elba, and Rick Flagg. So it does kind of have a tight three, and the others are like side characters, but the side characters are are very well fleshed out in that one. This one, yeah, it's it's very weird that they're somehow like poor, like they're almost spending too much time on side characters sometimes, yet none of them are fleshed out enough. <laughs> I, I would agree. They're doing um, backstory out of obligation almost, or like to fill airtime. You know, her sword, way. her sword steals the souls of those that she kills. Dude, we don't fucking know who she is. Like, I'm sorry, we don't care. We get a random flashback of her slashing Japanese gangsters in the street. <laughs> is what is supposed to mean to anything? <laughs> is this supposed to? And what I also don't understand. She's definitely not a criminal. I always, this whole time, once again, thought she was in the Suicide Squad a criminal. Not really. Yeah. Rick no. Flag goes, she's watch here to do. watch my back. Huh? You don't get back up, dude? Her introduction in the to the squad in the helicopter is just her going, and Rick Flag going, you don't, not slashing these ones. She'll cut through you in one one swipe. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's the worst banter of all time. Oh, oh. okay. So but I guess the only- Do you think, oh, I yeah. mean- What? It probably landed her the boys role, so- I mean, Silver we don't know lining. that directly, but yeah, works work. Hey, she probably doesn't look back on this and is like, I regret making this film. She got fucking paid fat by true. WB. True, 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 true. Uh, yeah. Um, Jai Carney Who, as, uh, uh, what were you going to say? Who's your favorite of the side characters then? I'd say the main four are like Amanda, Rick, um, uh, Will Smith, and Harley. Um. I would say it would be uh, Jai Courtney who plays Captain Boomerang. He's just there oh. to have fun, let, Tom you know, Hardy. be in the role. Uh, I do think so. The Flash scene is in addition. It was shot by Zack Snyder while he. I was, was going to say that was not in the original. I don't think. Uh, I think it Maybe. might have been. I feel like it I would have, but it was added I in like post production. Like it wasn't oh, part of, because okay. Zack Snyder sh shot it as part of Justice League. Uh, but other than that, Jai Courtney is the right balance. Like we don't really need backstory. He's just, you know, we, he's morally gray and, and, and uh, but he's kind of, he sticks around. He's a team player. Like I love the introductions. He go, they just go, he robbed every bank in Australia, then made his way to the U S exactly. <laughs> that's all you need. That's all we need to know. Um, uh, I think his shining moment was convincing the one guy to run who got his head blown off and he's like i'm staying like i'll be here like that was pretty good so yeah he's a good side character i do killer croc is pretty cool too killer croc i think used to be cool until king shark came around sure but you know what we didn't have that foresight at the time i i didn't but now all, all every scene i saw with croc i was like should be King Shark. And you know why? I'm going to change my answer to uh, Killer Croc. Because why? Because he won the, this movie an Oscar. What do you for mean? Make, for costumes. This oh, movie won an Oscar. Oh. This movie won an Oscar for its costumes? Best supporting. Yeah, pretty sure. Let me. Uh, <laughs> wow. It's got an Oscar. I know that for sure. For best makeup Woo! and hairstyling. That was because of uh, King Croc. Not because of uh, El Diablo? All that mm, makeup, all that, all the tattoos. No, it was, it was the Joker's tattoo. Or Harley, Deranged. a Joker. Strange. <laughs> um, you know what though? We we skipped over it. I don't hate Jared Leto's laugh. He's pretty good. I watched he's, the original the trailer laugh. just before this record. Uh, that David Ayer says mm -hmm. strikes the right tone um, of what he was going for. And Jared Leto's pretty chilling in it. I, don't I think it's ambitious says, to take on I'm the Joker. Hurt your real bad. <laughs> so yeah, that's the line I remember the most from her. I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you real bad. Like he's like shaking his mouth. <laughs> his jowls are going, <laughs> the room, shaking all over the place. Uh, there is like a part where he's like barking at someone, or no, is he barking or like he's growling? Arr. Like he just gets in his face and he's growling, and I was like. Ooh, I, I kind of don't like that. Like, 
And I probably in 2016 was like corny, cheesy. But now that I'm an adult, I was like, oh, that's kind of scaring me. Stop. <laughs> yeah, some of the Joker. Yeah, the Joker scenes are are are, are weird. Like the club scene with Common. When he's smiling like this, and he he covers it with the smile. <laughs> <laughs> but the, like trying to establish him as like this club banger like i don't know <laughs> it was almost like he was the penguin sort of a like a little bit you know yeah. what oh my god i just nailed it the reason we don't feel like the joker fits in the mob world is right in the name it's organized yeah. crime and the joker is not it's organized chaos. in and, the slightest yeah is that um is that a, a consequence or just a, a, a lasting impression from uh from the dark knight we we sort of equate the joker with like chaos and anarchy no i think that is the joker because he's the dichotomy right. of batman mm -hmm. and batman is like law and order order law like civility and, and it's funny that Bar batman chooses to do it like in the shadows in the dark like super serious mm -hmm. and the joker's obviously a joker he does it in bright colors and laughs in your face and he spits on you where Batman's trying to hide, the Joker just comes out in front, uh, you know, in the middle of the street and starts shooting up cars. So I think that um, there's always there should always be an element of that, if that makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't need to be the whole character, but, like, I, I think that's why we feel so weird about him, like, bossing around mobsters, is, like, yeah. the, the mobsters he has in The Dark Knight are, like, mentally ill people that he's, like, bossing around. Not, mm. like people he's like here's your cut of the drug money this week yeah it uh it feels almost like um an elseworlds like yeah, yeah take yeah, rendition does, actually, of the which, character yeah and i don't hate different interpretations of the character but by nature we're gonna rank them and this is just not my favorite sure. of it yeah um I don't know. so we've what other characters are there i don't know so, yeah, there's Diablo, there's Killer them. Croc. Yeah, we've talked to most of them. Amanda Waller. Talk to me about Amanda Waller. We'll, we'll, we touched on her a bit. Uh, Viola Davis is in the running. Uh, 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 it's almost Oprah like it was Winfrey made for her. One. And no, Octavia she was Spencer. not. You get a no, bomb in your neck, and you get a bomb in your neck, and you get a bomb in your neck. There's no way Oprah Winfrey was almost in talks to be in this According movie. to Wikipedia. <laughs> Dude. Are you shitting me? Has Oprah ever acted before? And she was just like, yeah, I guess I'll go do a DC she must have acted. movie. She's oh, produced movies and all. Fuck? Yeah. But uh, yeah, Octavia <laughs> Spencer was the other one in the, the running. All great actresses besides Oprah yeah. Winfrey. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay. I, um. So how does, let's talk about the climax of the movie. Should happen. Dude, like this what? Is one of the worst part of the movie. And I, and listen, no, 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 no. So there's a bomb that was left there. Once again, this is supposed to be some sort of twist that Rick Flag knew about this the whole time because he was there when it started. And we get the cut of him being like, she took off, which we had in a different context before. Mm -hmm. No setup for this twist that Rick Flag knew about this. And both of these other twists, there's really no consequences for either of them. They're just kind of like, oh, all right, let's get back to it, I guess. <laughs> like, it's so bad. Yeah. And so they get there, and there's a bomb, and so they're like, take out brother with, with the bomb in the corner. And then there's a dude under the water, and the bomb is set for two seconds, and he clicks it. Where the fuck is he going? He's dead. There's a dude under the water, clicks the bomb, dead. No way he survives any of that. He's 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 facing a bomb, and it's two seconds. He gave it to a teleporter so that she could click and teleport out. The dude in a, a fucking scuba costume is dead, dead is dead as a doorknob. What are we? And he's some not kind part of, of the suicide. suicide squad. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even part of the suicide squad. He's a, he's a military dude. So. They take out the brother. Here's the other thing. Diablo then gets. Turn, uh, a second form. He has the Sasuke he, superpower. It, what is this? What is... <laughs> the Susano. It is. Oh my god, that is so I funny. It literally that looks. In theaters. I was like, <laughs> it looks just okay, like I need a Susano. A Naruto live action. Out now. of the blue, out of the blue, he just goes. I'll take care of him. <laughs> and he's like a fire demon now, and he's 
he's a boxer now too and he takes out the one dude and then rick flag was like kara i love you stab 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 this heart okay she's dead <gasps> she's not dead here's the other thing like what they had the heart the whole happened? time yeah they had the heart the whole time what happened like this i understand kara was trying to take over the world and they stopped that uh -huh. but like what happened in this movie I, I like the suicide squad formed but then there's a whole nother hour and it's very much just like did they wander the streets and then like and then oh when I accidentally bump into this problem i just it was so weird and then when deadshot is like unloading on her i was like dude clearly those bullets ain't doing shit what are you stop like dude he's unloading rounds on her this whole climax was silly yeah i honestly the whole climax felt super silly i agree so the, my understanding of the conflict of this movie is that the enchantress is this all-powerful being who is being controlled by the heart uh, yeah, Amanda Waller's got her heart on, uh, yeah, yeah on, so the, uh, it, it's a hostage. So the Enchantress somehow tries to employ her brother by, you know, taking over another person, escaping the confines of the heart, or acting by night? Is, like, is, that, is that the loophole? She, her, Amanda starts stabbing the heart, and she goes, brother, help me. And he goes, oh, and they never address it again. Yeah. Um, but she he fixed, she he fixed her heart. Yeah, I don't know how she creates a, a brother. You know, possesses another person with the spirit of her brother, or unlocks that relic to unleash the spirit of her brother. Yes, and that was a great scene when she's in the mirror and she scares the dude and grabs his head and yanks That's it cool. through. This is what I'm saying is in the beginning of this movie, I was like, this shit's good. This shit's hype. And then uh, as soon as the team like all meets together, I literally was like, what What is going on? Yeah, it. Uh... I don't know. It's juggling too much. I don't know what yeah. more there is we can say about this movie. Yeah, no, no, I I agree. What um, what what do you think was your favorite moment? Uh, I think when they are first clearing floors in that high rise, going four by four. Yeah, you know, you get the they're going through an office like shooting all the the monster minions. Uh, seeing the team in action, it's it's fun. It, you, we had sort of seen it in a trailer. Um, I think that was one of the better payoffs of the trailer to movie going experience. But then, yeah. But then it it turns like so many other superhero movies. You know, it turns into just like a CGI slugfest, which gets I don't know. Yeah, was, especially when you don't like, understand what's going, don't really understand what's going on. It's just like, uh, what am I? What am I watching? <laughs> so. The thing what here's the other thing. Uh, I'll get to my favorite part in a moment, but something you said is like generally in a good superhero film, the hero, which I get their villains, but they're heroes in this case, has to like learn or overcome something. In this case, a great example would be like we have to be a team like if we're going to do this and there never was any of that for like anyone. Yeah. You get what I'm saying like Yeah. What? Deadshot, ready for this? He's standing there, and his daughter's face appears and goes, don't do it, Daddy, don't shoot. And he goes against it. He shoots. Because he like, realizes I, it's fake. I understand that, but it was like, I, here's, I guess moment. here's the... I agree. Here's the moment, because like, he did it, because he listened to his daughter and didn't shoot Batman, the lesson weirdly becomes like, Shouldn't have listened to my daughter. Bang! Like, that was what I took my in that moment. My daughter don't know shit. Bang! My daughter don't know shit about the streets. Bang! <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so my favorite, favorite moment, part? though. Yeah. I think it was probably it, towards the m middle end, though, which is shocking that it was in this part of the movie, but it's when the Joker shows up again and actually does break out Harley. Mm -hmm. And so that whole entrance to that, but then when she's like, dead shot, take oh, this shot, was... I'll give you I'll give you freedom, your daughter, and he shoots, and it looks like, and I, I even was like, she's got two more movies. I was like, what the hell? And then he goes, I missed. And she like pops back up, and I was like, that, okay, this is like a little more of the heart of the movie yes. now, if I'm being honest. Like, 
Will Smith being like, I can't, I'm not going to shoot a teammate. Like, like there's I, it a doesn't... moral code in there somewhere. Yes. Yes. Code and I feel honor like the... among thieves. Is that the, yeah. Maybe Something. that's the theme. Yeah. And they just didn't nail it. He did say that. And then <laughs> fucking give me because I'm not a theme. Dude, you ruined my point. You're ruining my theme of the movie. Um, Here's the other thing. This is so funny to me. So there's a couple of times people are not speaking English in this movie. There's Japanese, Spanish, and there's a made-up language between the the, uh, the Enchantress and her brother. And the subtitles are like a 13-year-old was like, I'm picking a cool subtitle. Like, like wingdings. Like the effects, the 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 font was like, oh Halloween, like the text is dripping, yeah. It's like the dude. goosebumps font. <laughs> That's what it was. There you go, you nailed it. It's like the goosebumps font. I was like, what are we doing here? Just use normal font. Come on. He's like, I was trying to give it a tone and a feel. Um, um I guess overall, these are my closing thoughts. I'm jumping into it. We'll get to some letterbox reviews after. I was on an emotional roller coaster. 2016, I remember enjoying this movie. I don't know I've watched it again since then. I really don't because there was so many parts of this movie that I didn't remember. And I wonder if that's maybe why the first half was more enjoyable because I only remember the boring slug of the ending. But um, I I went in very down on it. And the first half, I was like... (gasps) I even texted you. I go, oh my God, I'm really excited to talk about this. And then once like the hour mark hit, I was so out of it. Mm-hmm. I was, I, it was wild. Um, I don't know if this is a hot take, but of the DCEU movies we've watched, I think this is the worst one. I don't think that's a hot take, take at all. This is okay. I, universe. I think, so, I think some people would say Batman versus Superman was worse, and I just don't think that's true at all. This is 26% tomato meter score. <laughs> oh 58% my percent God. audience score, but 26. 28. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah this I, I was... I gave this movie the benefit of the doubt in 2016 because I'm lenient and a fanboy, but on rewatch, woof. Um, I'm going to give it a, a one out of five star. Yeah. Wow. It, I would not watch again. That's that's. Yeah, I, I don't. I I don't. I don't see another reason to watch this movie again. I will just go watch the Suicide Squad when I need this. That's a good point. Um, yeah, that is a good point. And, and you know what? It is. It's totally eclipsed by the fact that, what five years later, uh, same premise, some of the same cast, similar characters, and it's just done like beautifully Mm -hmm. it's just done so much better than this and and i wonder if we didn't have that direct comparison if maybe i'd give it like a two a two and a half but like i said i see no reason to watch this ever again if i'm being 100 percent honest that's completely understandable uh i think i would throw this on again just for shits and giggles like this is a maybe nostalgia yeah yeah i don't know that i have I, I also don't think I've seen this since 2016 in its entirety. Um, it's a shame because David Ayer has yes. made some great yes. movies. And I think the part of me that is maybe a little forgiving in this scenario is just wondering what could have been. Uh, mm. Will Smith. I, and I'm right. I see the the potential. Will I want to Sm- make that clear. Yeah, Will Sorry, Smith and Margot Robbie uh, carry this film. Uh, and this is very much a movie made by committee. Unfortunately, ah, and so a great yes. Uh, although you have these two superstars, um, it's just bogged down by so much narrative nonsense that you lose any sort of momentum in the plot, uh, and you really just throw away a pretty simple premise. And I think that's maybe what the second one gets right. Um, I think so. I don't want to blame David Ayer, but you know, as much as as much as I want to see the Ayer cut, it's like. Okay, but this cut is cut out of stuff that was shot, plus some reshoots. So like, it's remixed, but how much better could you make it? I don't. I don't know. I'd, I'd be. I'd watch an air cut. I don't know that I would go mm. back and watch this. Um, I'll say two. Out I of would five. watch an air cut. Yeah, I would say a- two. And out I'm of not five. faulting you. I don't blame David Ayer. I think one thing, and I think the reason this was such an interesting watch for me is because I totally see the potential. Mm-hmm. Like I totally see where. This movie tightens up this, takes a left turn instead of a right, that 
there's some really great moments in there. Like I said, there's two moments that could have been like real good shocks mm -hmm. if they just like set them up at all, but they just really didn't. So not blaming David Ayer. I, I think some of the material, I think there was probably a lot of pressure to fit as many characters in as he could, as many stars in oh, as yeah. he could. Because so... this was this was also supposed to help launch the DCEU into relevancy against Marvel. Um, Ike and, and ready for this in this movie. Who? Ike Barinholtz. He's the security guard that flirts with. Uh, From what's he in? Uh, he's in like the neighbors movies. Uh, oh. He's. Uh, he's yes. Like a, yeah. He's the security yeah. guard that the Joker gets. Yeah, I didn't know that was his name. I recognized him. Um, the other one was uh, Hopper from Stranger Things. Oh, yeah, was David in, Harvard. Yeah, that really threw me, that really Whoa. threw me off. Honestly, he was like, I don't know, Chief. I put my chips on Amanda Waller, and I was like, Hopper. <laughs> was this before Stranger Things? God, you know, it probably wasn't, but for some reason, I don't know, I recognized him. Yeah. He's in one. That feels like 2016. Maybe the same time? Oh. Okay, so that's his takeoff wow. point. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't recognize him, but this time around, I go, oh, it's Hop. There's, there's good old Hopper. Um, random moment that I don't know, I would call my. It was just my what the fuck are we doing here moment with this movie is and <laughs> yeah. very early get the flashback of how Harley ends up in jail. It's her and the Joker speeding through the streets in like a Lamborghini or something. Batman's chasing them. They, they veer off the road into the water and Batman goes in to save Harley. Uh, and she's like, she flew through the windshield or it was like half through the windshield. He's underwater. He's got a face mask. He's got, she, pops up because she's not dead and he punches her in the face underwater <laughs> it was like the goofiest thing i've ever fucking seen committed to film it's like there's that underwater and then he gives her mouth to mouth punch, and i know? was like dude this is someone just wanted batman to make out with harley quinn here this is so yeah i okay yeah. anyways um i got a couple of letterbox reviews here mm -hmm. uh one said uh, half a star, uh, Harley or Margot Robbie's back must hurt from carrying this movie. Uh, two stars. One and a half stars. Two, two stars. Me and Suicide Squad. <laughs> so when do we kill ourselves? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. are we? Some start, uh, Suicide Squad? Oh, okay. Two stars. This is Katana. She's got my back. I would advise not getting killed by her. Her sword traps the souls of its victims. That's the line, and it's like, dude, what? Yeah. Um, this is a realization I had while watching Suicide Squad Isekai is a new anime series that is debuting week to week on Max. So Have you watched any I didn't it? get to the punchline of this. Mm -hmm. I told you I was going to watch a couple episodes for the podcast. I finished this movie, and I literally didn't feel like I could. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm I so will, sorry. Yeah. Give us, give us the pitch or, or uh, the the elevator pitch. It's uh, so it's the Suicide Squad. The first episode, you know, sets it up like like the beginning of this movie, uh, and the rest of the season is they go through a portal and they're in an alternate dimension where they have to fight oh. knights and ogres. And they're in like a fantasy world. So I guess isekai oh. is like the anime trope where you get transferred to an alternate dimension, oh. like a fantasy world. And okay. it's like the anime dynamics where it's like a little more over the top theatrical. Like that's where these superhero characters fit in. I don't know that grounded takes really work that well. Like I was thinking about this. Well, and I think that's part of James Gunn thing is like, while it is reality, it's, it's very campy. Like think of polka dot yeah. man and rat girl. Mm -hmm. Like and you have it to lean works. Into that. Yeah. But, and that's part of why it works though. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because uh, one of my gripes with Suicide Squad is, or even just Harley Quinn, the character, and this is maybe a comic book thing more so, but it's like, and no, she came from the animated series, but she, anyways. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Uh, uh, it's not enough that Harley Quinn, the character, her name is like a, a play on words on Harlequin. But yeah. her, <laughs> But her original, her real government name is Harleen Quinzel. It's like a layer on a layer that's, that's so <laughs> unnecessary. And it's like, and that's not one of those comic book decisions that was made in the 30s and they've just had to no, run with it. That was made in 1996. I don't know. Like, 
Just uh, comic book authors never lose that that uh, certain certain aspect yeah, of like, them. How do you make this as on the nose as possible? Um, uh, in any, yeah, that's good. Um, let's get into some news. I think we've talked enough about this movie. Yeah. Um, uh, I have interesting news. Okay. There's two parts. This is a twofer. This sure. bit of news. Inside Out Two is now Pixar's highest grossing movie ever, dethroning, this is the second bit of news, The Incredibles 2, which I did not know had the title. Yeah, that's both items are news to me. Uh, congrats, Inside Out 2. <laughs> Wait, is that? I think it's. I think Incredibles 2 is better than Inside grossing Out Highest grossing Disney or just animated? Pixar. Pixar. It's just Pixar. Ah, okay. All right. That's cool, I guess. Um, That's fine. <laughs> um. Oh, but oh, oh, but uh. Well, this being said, though, is uh not to say that uh it um it stops there because um it's it's still making money inside out too. It's like true. setting all it's sorts of still records. running in theaters, which is probably the longest it's the movie has crazy. been in theaters <laughs> in the year since. Yeah, it's crazy. Twenty. So the the one <laughs> I'm seeing is Warner Brothers and Paramount have expressed interest. Merging Max in Paramount Plus. I don't know if that's the latest development because I think I also saw that Skydance bought Paramount. I think other way around. Or okay, so so it, it, the stri- the streaming wars as they've been dubbed are coming to some peaceful resolutions. We've seen a lot of talks of streaming sites that are on the the verge of merging, buying each other, what have you. It's a real uh, remember singular. The the huge yeah. cell phone network yeah. no longer exists. AT and T just bought them. Like, kind of yeah, yeah. kind of looks like the Nickelodeon, oh, like a Nickelodeon thing almost. The little orange guy. Um, so yeah, that's what it seems like. So look, I, I think I expressed this last time though. If it's at an affordable price, fuck it, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> so the latest I'm seeing is that Paramount and Skydance are mer- merging essentially. There's probably more hoops they have to jump through, but. Um... What yeah, they got to go us? through some succession type deals, grease uh, some palms, make sure the deal goes through. Big Brother in the Severance Office. <laughs> Are those the right yeah. ones? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, this is an interesting announcement to me. Um, discussing Films tweets, Minions 3 will be released on June 30th, 2027. I'm going be, to be honest. We've been seeing some out there dates for movies. Like this, this will be in 2026, mm-hmm. 2025. I don't think I've ever seen something scheduled for 2027. Yeah, I mean that feels right. Three, three years out. What? My okay. my first thought was there aren't already three minions movies. I feel like the. I think the problem. <laughs> I think what it is is it's uh, like Despicable Me and Minions, and they're all because this is Despicable Me. It's the Despicable Me and Minions franchise. Here's more news. Has passed five billion dollars worldwide, but it's the two, it's the franchise of Despicable Me and Minions. Imagine creating Despicable Me back in the day, like this touching tale of Steve Carell adopting these three daughters, and them being like, "We need a billion of these yellow little idiots." That'd be like having an o- long-running Oompa Loompas franchise. <laughs> oh. oh. My God, you know, you know, if streaming was around yeah. in the days of when Willy Wonka first came around, there'd be an Oompa Loompa series. Yeah, um, I don't have a specific. <laughs> That's a great comparison. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, no, Smurfs are already the, the main characters, but Long Legs, yeah. the number one movie in America after Despicable Me <laughs> Four. <laughs> it's on the poster. <laughs> And here's the thing, me and Evan, we've never covered a Minions movie. I've seen Despicable One. I've Despicable seen one Minions and maybe two. One. Um, I have no interest in checking out any of these movies. For the pod, for, for the the that is the only reason I would do it for the journalistic integrity. Um, but like, God most, damn, what a the most <laughs> ironic part of that is that Minions famously have very short legs. That was a terrible joke. Ba-dum. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you for the obligatory laugh. Uh, uh, so this is not a specific headline, but we have started getting um, our first looks at 
uh, the Superman movie being shot by James Gunn right now. We've seen uh, it's news to me. David Corden sweats uh, uh, costume in action. We've also seen on set photos of Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner, whoever's paying, uh, playing Hawk Girl. Uh, it, have you not? Terrific. Have you seen these? Yeah, on set photos? I, yeah, yeah. I've seen them all. And so I, I think I love them. I just yeah. don't. Yeah, they're cool. I don't Mr. know what to terrific. say on them. Mr. Terrific. Yeah. Uh, but I think the general storyline they're going with there is that Max Lord, it's like a, a you know, a, a take on sort of the Justice League International, like a corporatized body of team of superheroes and, and Superman is like the the independent. I don't know. So it's like all star Superman, which uh I'm excited. I I I know this movie we just watched has nothing to do with James Gunn, but I left Feeling watching this movie, being like, man, he would do I'm this so, so happy, much. James. Yeah, I will. I, he, yeah, did it so like, he would have done this so much better. No, and it's obviously because of the comparison. But like, I left this being like, I, I feel so, like, I feel protected right now with James Gunn. I really trust him. I'm not kidding. I, I, I think the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy is Marvel's best trilogy, and just seeing the Suicide Squad versus this. Is just night and day. We've seen Peacemaker, mm-hmm. Peacekeeper, Peacemaker. Peacemaker. We love Peacemaker. And when we went back and did the Scooby Doo movies, <laughs> I know this talking. sounds so crazy, but like they were amazing. They, hold they up. held up so well. Yeah. And so like I just I feel so ready for this movie. It's not even funny. Yeah. And it's 2025 ish. Yeah. It's, it's a year. It's it's, wow. it's less than a year now. Yeah. We're in the end game. We're in the end game. I I agree. As longtime Zack Snyder DCEU apologists, I'm ready to put this phase of movies behind us. I'm ready to get a good eulogy. We're still doing DCEU <laughs> eulogy for like another three years at this rate. But... No, you know what? Yeah, I was going to say, you know what? We should make it a mission. We should try to finish within the year if we can. Before Superman comes out. Yeah, before Superman, okay. probably. We can do it. <laughs> Bachelor Even party, if we we're have just to go off schedule. Even if we have to yeah, we're just gonna go ham on all these movies, record them back to back. Hold on, guys, we need another hour or two. Just get progressively drunker for each week. <laughs> we're fun. like at Zack Snyder's Justice League. We're like, hate it. Can't sit through it at all right now. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I got nothing else. Do you have any more news? Anything else on Suicide Squad? James uh, Gunn? What do you got? No, I did. I, I got nothing else. Thank you for listening. Thanks for, you know, being along for the ride, even when we, when we take these little detours. Uh, you know, yeah. we love cartoons. We also love comic booky shit. And so, yeah, this is our goddamn yeah. podcast. We'll do what we want. But <laughs> thank you for enjoying it with us. I hopefully you do. And if you don't, let us know at Two Dudes Watch Cartoons on Instagram or wherever else. Yeah. You let us know what you like. We're here to cater. Uh, but yeah, if you love this episode, we have more. You can go check out on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. Uh, like Evan said, please follow us at Two Dudes Watch Cartoons on Instagram and TikTok. And make sure you like, rate, review wherever you're watching. Uh, you know, uh, and appreciate it. Helps new people find us. And once again, I didn't do it at the top, which is a mistake. But you guys are, uh, every time we ask for people to go follow us on YouTube, subscribe you guys uh, show out in numbers. So we really appreciate that. Thank you so much. That'll do it for this episode of Two Dudes Watch Cartoons, a DCE eulogy. We will catch you next time. Two Dudes Watch Cartoons.